QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Feeds and Your Accounting System. Get ready because we're going to Bookkeeping Cloud 9 with QuickBooks Online. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, the primary tool we'll be using for the first part of the course, looking for a result that has Intuit.com in the browser. Here we go. We're going to be selecting the United States version and then verify that we're not a robot. We're going to duplicate some tabs like we do every time, putting our major financial statement reports in them, right-clicking on the tab up top, and then we're going to duplicate it. As that's thinking, I'm going to right-click on the tab again, duplicate again, and then as that's thinking, back to the tab to the middle, go to the reports down on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to open up the balance sheet report. This is going to be our standard process. Then I'm going to the tab to the right, Go into the reports on the left-hand side, and this time opening up the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, sometimes called the P&L. And then I'm going to go back to my first tab. So this is going to be what I would think of as my data input tab, then the balance sheet and the income statements on the right side. Last time we went through some navigation, and we discussed briefly the bank feeds, and the fact that the first part of the course, we're actually not going to be using the bank feeds, but doing the full accounting cycle, the full accounting process without the bank feeds. So we can learn how all the forms work. And then we will have an entire section on bank feeds discuss. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Seeing how they work, how the rules work, how you can put the bank feeds in place. Now, I know that a lot of people probably would think, hey, I want to get right to the bank feeds because that's, that's the thing I, I'm most interested in possibly. So, and I can totally understand that. So I would recommend first watching this. And if you think you are in a situation where the bank feeds are, can be easily implemented or that you have the knowledge to go forward and jump to the bank feeds section, then you can go ahead and do that. So that's, we go into the transactions here. You'll recall that the bank feeds are housed here. So let me just first lay out some of the complexities with the bank feeds and what you need to know about them and why I would recommend getting a basis understanding of the accounting process before you just upload the bank feeds. The bank feeds are gonna be a connection between QuickBooks and of course, your bank. Now the bank has a, the cash flow of your business, but that's basically all it has. So if you're pulling in your information from the bank, the question is, what are you actually getting uh, from the bank that's coming into QuickBooks. Well, if we look at, this is going to be a mock bank statement. You can see that your bank statement basically has simply the beginning balances, and then it's got the additions and the subtractions of the cash transactions. In the detail down below, it will give us the deposits detail and the outflow detail, the increases and decreases to the checking account. 
Now, when you look at the deposits, oftentimes if you did a deposit like a check, like or just cash that you put into the into your bank account, then all you're going to have on the deposit side is the amount of the deposit and the date the deposit happened. So that's what would be pulling into QuickBooks. That's it, right? That's all it would have. And that is not enough to actually record the transaction oftentimes because you might want to know, for example, the customer and you at least want to know if it's revenue or if it's some other account that we need to be adding. Now, if you made a deposit from a check, then again, the check might not pull in and give you more information that would be on the check, such as possibly the customer information, but it would be information you could find on the bank with the canceled check. If, however, you are got an online transfer, then you're going to have more information because that's usually going to give you the, in, the information in the bank description of who the money came from, which will help you to populate the information from the bank feeds into your system, providing you with the customer name possibly and giving you more information on how you would, would record the transaction to the proper income account. On the outflow side, if you actually write physical checks, then when you pull the information in from the bank feeds, what you're going to have is the amount that came out of your account, the check number, and then the date, not the date that you wrote the check though, the date that it came out of your uh, account, it, because that's when it hit the actual bank account. So if you actually write checks, and a lot of people don't write checks as much because they do everything electronically, but if you write check, there's going to be this timing difference between when you wrote the check and when you are, it's going to clear the bank. And so that could be a problem for the use of the bank feeds because one of the bookkeeping things you want to do if you write checks is to be tracking the checks that are outstanding, the ones that you wrote, which have not yet cleared the bank. However, if you're in a situation where you do all electronic type transfers, then you then it, it'll be easier for the bank feeds because you'll typically have a date that's going to be pretty close to when you did the transfer and the transfer will provide you with possibly information in the bank memo that can tell you who the vendor was so that you can add the vendor. So the general idea here is you've got just the increases and decreases to your checking account flowing in from the bank but you're going to have to at least verify some more information in order to help quickbooks populate it from what i would call bank feed limbo into the actual creation of the financial statement so in other words if you pulled this information into the actual bank feeds it's not going to be used yet to create your financial statements but rather it's going to be populated down here and what I would call bank fee limbo. So it's in limbo because we don't have enough information. We don't have enough information to pull it in through the to the promised land to create the financial statements with it. So obviously it has the increases or decreases, but the things you're going to need to add or verify is the account that it needs to go to. And you're also going to need to, to give us the vendor or the customer may not be required but that would be useful information to add as well so that we can track the information by customer or vendor. If you don't do that information and you just connect to the bank, let's say you just set up your QuickBooks file, you connect it to the bank, and then you pull in a year's worth of bank transactions, then it's all gonna happen and populate in here in bank feed limbo. And if you don't know how to pull it from here into your financial statements, then it's gonna be a mess, right? So that's why you want to have an understanding of your bookkeeping system before you set up uh, the bank feeds process. Now, let's think about the bookkeeping systems in terms of what would be the easiest systems to use bank feeds versus the more complex systems to use bank feeds, which again, we'll talk more about in the bank feeds section. So, but if you, if you want to jump there, you can uh, jump there. So this is a flow chart. Now this is the desktop version of the flowchart, but we're just using the flow of the forms to see how normal accounting systems work and how the bank feeds might fit within it. The easy, so we can break these out by the way into our cycles, vendor cycle, customer cycle, employee cycle. And, uh, and so when we think about a cash-based system versus an accrual-based system, we can actually think of something on a cash or accrual-based system by cycle, meaning, I could be on a cash-based system for my vendors, my outflows, 
I pay everything in cash when it becomes due. Uh, but on my revenue side, maybe I'm on more of a of a of a accrual system due to the industry that I'm in requiring me to invoice customers before I receive the payment. So this will really be driven not by just your choice. It's not like, well, I'm just going to be a cash based system. Well, if you're doing a kind of work that you have to invoice people, then you're not going to be in a cash based system because you're going to have to do the work first and invoice people. So it's going to be driven kind of by industry. So the easiest one to link into just connect the bank feeds and let it flow, right? The, the most automated system would be one where on the revenue side of things, you're getting paid from like a platform that would be like gig work or something. So if you just get if you just if you just do work on a platform and the platform just pays you periodically, possibly monthly, and you just want to take that money and record it as revenue when you receive it. Well, that will be easy to do with bank feeds, although you'll lose some detail because because the deposit will hit your account. It'll be an electronic transfer. You'll be able to see who it came from. Therefore, you can easily add the customer and you can say that all of the money that's coming into your account is income. And that's another kind of caveat you have to be aware of. All the money that's coming into your account under that system, you're gonna assume is income and then record it as income. Although you can kind of check it because if it's an electronic transfer, you'll see who it came from. So that if you have that kind of system, if you're in gig work or something, it's going to be pretty easy to do it to do a bank feeds uh, type of setup. It's not like a full service bookkeeping system that way, because normally what would happen is you would want to record the revenue when you earned the revenue and then double check that the revenue hit the bank when it hit the bank, you know, with a reconciliation process. However, because and, and notice that you're also using a deposit form under this system to record revenue which isn't normally the form used to record revenue. Usually we record revenue with an invoice or a sales receipt. These two forms are better designed oftentimes to record, to make other reports like sales by customers or sales by items reports. So you lose a little bit of detail possibly, but that might be well worth it because it could be a very easy system to do. So if you're using that system, bank feeds might be the best it might be really pretty easy to set up. Now, if you're in a system where you're on an accrual based system, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. That would be a system like a bookkeeper, for example, or a landscaper where you have to do the work first and then you have to invoice the client for the work that you did. And then you're gonna have to receive the payment. That means you're gonna have to enter an invoice. Why does that make the bank feeds more complicated? Because when you enter an invoice, you're not getting paid but you're going to record revenue at the point in time you enter the invoice. And so now you have to actually track that outstanding balance in accounts receivable. And normally you would then receive the payment at, the, at a later point in time and then make the deposit. So how do bank, how's a bank feed going to fit in there? Because the bank feed is going to hit the deposit in your checking account. Well, normally what would happen is you would still have to do a full service accounting process. You would you'd make an invoice, you would receive the payment, you would manually make the deposit in QuickBooks and then use bank feeds to tie out or match the deposit. The bank feeds now acting as a helper for the bank reconciliation process, but not recording anything new. Now note that you could connect the bank feed uh, deposit to the invoice possibly, or possibly to the received payment. We'll talk more about that later, but whatever system you set up, if you have an accrual system, you're invoicing clients on the revenue side, then that's going to add a level of complexity to, and you have to think about, well, how are the bank feeds going to fit in to that kind of system? And you have to first set up your system and then put the bank feeds kind of uh, into it. So, uh, and then if you're on a cash register situation, you're, you're collecting money at a store or something like that. Usually the process is you have a sales receipt recording the revenue and the cash you received at the point in time that you received it. Normally you don't deposit it directly into the checking account when you receive it because it's in limbo somewhere. It's either in your cash register cash or it's a credit card or something like that. And so you're going to you're going to you're going to then put it into a clearing account and then make the deposit again. 
although this is a cash based system it's more complex than the cash based system where you just got paid by gig work right if i just got paid by gig work then they just paid me directly from the platform into my checking account and i don't have to take the cash or i don't have to deal with a credit card company generally or anything and it's pretty easy to just record the bank feed as as revenue but if i'm collecting money at from multiple different kinds of payments and whatnot at a cash register then for the internal uh controls i'm going to want to collect the cash and then count the cash and what whatnot and then deposit the cash manually and then most likely use the bank feeds once again not to record the transaction but rather to double check that the transaction has been recorded doing helping us out with the internal control of the bank reconciliation process you could again connect the bank feed possibly to the to the sales receipt creation we'll talk more about that later just note it's a little bit more complex in that kind of system also if you have inventory inventory messes things up oftentimes when you're because inventory by definition will typically throw you off of a cash based system and the system that would be most easy to automate with bank feeds would be a cash based system and even easier than that a cash based system where you're getting paid from electronic transfers possibly like gig work if you have inventory the problem is when you buy the inventory you can't just expense it right so if i buy inventory on the vendor side of things normally uh, if i buy something or for money goes out of my of my company i would record it as an expense but with inventory you're supposed to record it as an asset at that at that point in time now i could do that with the bank feeds i could buy something and record it as an asset but then of course i have to track the inventory and when i sell the inventory then i'm going to sell it usually with a invoice or a sales receipt and if i'm using a perpetual inventory system then then the inventory would be decreased and the cost of goods sold would be recorded at the point in time we sell it so the fact that we have to track the inventory and then record the expense when we sell the inventory if we're using a full you know perpetual inventory system means that inventory is going to kind of mess up our our recording of of just on a cash based system there are workarounds around that so you might you might say hey maybe i don't maybe i don't have a lot of inventory on hand i just buy stuff and i sell it very quickly in which case maybe you could just expense it as cost of goods sold when you buy it or you might be using a periodic inventory system tracking inventory outside on a separate ledger so that could work and help you to stay more in a cash based system we'll talk about those options more in the when we when we when we get to the 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 cash the the bank feeds section but just note if you're tracking inventory that will usually be more complex on the cash outflow side if this is usually for small businesses where it might be the easiest to be on a cash basis so you might be able to use your bank feeds very easily on the cash outflows and have more difficulty on the revenue side if on the revenue side you have to invoice you're on an accrual method for revenue you're on a cash method for the expenses because when the expenses come due you're not entering a bill possibly but rather you're just recording the expense when when it comes up right you're just and if you're paying with an electronic transfer as as bills come up you just pay it with an electronic transfer then that would be the easiest thing to record with a bank feed because now the money the money you don't have this accrual problem happening the money is repaid with a with a tr with a transfer which will give you uh memo information which will help you to record the vendor and and then you can use that to select the proper account that it should be going to also if you pay with credit cards the credit cards can be connected to the bank feeds like the checking accounts it's a little bit more complicated to wrap your mind around it's not really more complicated but most people think of paying some cash going down when something is paid as opposed to a liability going up but you can connect the credit card so that would be fairly easy to do as well but if you're on an accrual system and you're entering bills which is usually happening for small or mid-sized to larger businesses where they are trying to pay as late as possible because they're 
possibly if you have many transactions taking place, then cash management strategy becomes more crucial and paying the bill as late as possible becomes more important. And therefore you're entering your bill, you're tracking your accounts payable, which means you've added an accrual component. When you enter a bill into the system, it increases accounts payable and it records the expense or the inventory if you bought inventory and it doesn't have any cash related to it. So you can't record the bill just using the bank feeds and then you're going to pay the bill and when you pay the bill, it decreases the accounts payable and uh, records the, the uh, amount to cash. So how would bank feeds fit in then? You, you probably do the whole process, enter the bill and then pay the bill and then you would be matching the matching this transaction to the amount that came through the bank feeds, which means the bank feeds would once again be helping you with the reconciliation process, not with the actual recording. You may possibly be able to tie out the bank feed to the to the uh, to the bill uh, so that it records the transaction. But we'll talk more about that later. And then payroll throws a big wrench into everything. If you're doing payroll. Uh, then then no matter, you, there's two primary choices you can use for payroll. One is that you can run payroll through QuickBooks or which is usually a cost more. You have to you know pay for the QuickBooks use to do to run payroll or two have a third party provider do the payroll such as an ADP or a Paychex. No matter what you do, it's going to cause a complication to just recording things with bank feeds because with payroll, you have to process the payroll and record. There's an accrual component to it because you have to deal with, at least in the United States, payroll taxes, which means you have to do with withholdings, record liabilities, and uh, and therefore you can't just wait till something clears the banks and record it as employee expense or payroll or wages. Now there are workarounds to that once again, which we'll talk about when we get to the bank feeds section. But just note, if you're dealing with payroll, it's not going to be just as easy generally as just I'm just going to set up the bank feeds and we'll let it fly and we'll just let it roll uh, from there. So that's going to add complexity. So the the bottom line here, bank feeds are great. They add more. Uh, it makes things easier in a lot of ways. However, you first want to think about how your accounting system works and then how the bank feeds will fit into that accounting system. The things that will be most easiest for bank feeds if you're on a cash based system. Not only that, though, you're on a cash based system where you have transfers that are electronic transfers uh, that, that are that are coming through, possibly something like a gig work. Things that are going to make things more complex is if you're selling stuff at a cash register and you're trying to use the internal controls there. If you have accrual components on invoices on the sales side or entering bills. And of course, if you deal with inventory and if you have uh, employee information, any of that stuff will add a level of complexity. So you want to first understand how the whole cycle is working and then how you can put the bank feeds into your system. And there's no like one size fits all approach because you know everybody's accounting cycle will be a bit different depending on the industry that they're in and how large they are and so on. I'll also just realize that when we say that a site that a business is easy or difficult, we can break that further down, not just into the whole accounting process, but by cycle, meaning is their revenue cycle easy or difficult? Are they on a cash based system or do they have to invoice clients? Do they deal with tracking inventory? Is the vendor cycle easy or difficult? Are they just paying stuff with a bill or a credit card? I'm sorry, with a check or a credit card or expense? Are they doing electronic transfers or are they actually writing physical checks, which adds a level of complexity uh, or or are they entering bills, which which will make things more complex? And then do they have payroll? And then you can get into the to the levels of difficulty with payroll. How, how difficult is payroll to connect to the bank feeds? We'll get we'll dive into that later. If you if you feel confident that you want to dive into that straight away, then feel free to do that. Uh, we cover the bank feeds in a future section.